Hi. Now, in this question, what we've got to do is find the coordinates of the stationary point on the curve y equals x to the power 4 plus 32x. And then go on to determine whether that stationary point's a maximum or a minimum. And then, the last part, for what values of x does x to the power 4 plus 32x increase as x increases? So, if this is a question you'd like to try and haven't done so already, I'll give you a moment just to pause the video. When you come back, you can check the work solution or just fast forward to the end. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So, let's start with part one. And in part one then, we've got to find the coordinates of that stationary point for the curve y equals x to the power four plus 32x. And do remember that when you've got a curve, okay, we just sketch a curve here. This is not a sketch of this particular curve. It's just a general sketch of any curve, just so I can illustrate a particular point. And that is that at your stationary points, which say would be here on this curve, and also at this point here, at these stationary points, the gradient given by dy by dx equals zero. And that's basically our starting point. We've got to differentiate this curve to get the gradient in general, and then set dy by dx equal to zero, and solve for x. So if we start then by writing down that y equals x to the power 4 plus 32x, and if we differentiate this with respect to x, we've therefore got dy by dx equals, differentiating x to the power 4 gives us 4x cubed, and differentiating 32x with respect to x just gives us 32. So at stationary points, let's just write that in, therefore at stationary points, okay, I'll abbreviate this at stationary points, what we've got is dy by dx equals 0. And if that's the case, we therefore have our equation, which is 4x cubed plus 32 and that's going to equal zero. And to solve this, I can see that I could divide through by four, and if I divide through by four to each term, I get x cubed plus eight equals zero, and that would lead to x cubed equaling minus eight if I subtract eight from both sides. And to get x, I need to do the cube root now of minus eight. So therefore, x equals the cube root of minus eight. And the cube root of minus eight, just there's one value only, and that is minus two. Minus two, all cubed then, is minus eight. So I need to get the corresponding y value when x is minus two. So we'll say therefore, when x equals minus 2, I just need to substitute this back into our equation here. So when x equals minus 2, we therefore have y equals minus 2 to the power 4 plus 32 multiplied by minus 2. So if we work this out, we've got 16 here, minus 64, that gives us minus 48. So we've got our y value now, so we can wind this up. We're asked to find the stationary point. So what we'll have then is the stationary point is at minus two, minus 48. Okay. Right, now in the next part of the question, we're asked to determine whether this stationary point is a maximum or a minimum. Now, when you're asked to find out whether a stationary point is a maximum or a minimum, generally you've got two ways that you can tackle this. You can either work out the second differential, d2y by dx squared, and check to see whether 
your, when you substitute your value of x into this, that it's positive, which would mean it's a minimum, or if it's negative, it would mean it's a maximum, or you've got the gradient method. Well, I would prefer to do the second differential method, but we'll look at both methods anyway. So by the second differential method, if I differentiate this, we'll get 12x squared plus 0, just simply then 12x squared. And now I just need to substitute my value of x into this, so we'll just say when x equals minus 2, then what we have is therefore d2y by dx squared equals 12 multiplied by minus 2 all squared. Well this is 12 times 4 and 12 4s are 48. So what we've got here is a positive value, it's greater than 0. So therefore the conclusion is that what we have is therefore we have a minimum stationary point. Okay. Now I did say though that you could do it by an alternative method which is by considering the gradient either side of our stationary point. And if we were doing that, we'd set up a table, we'd have x here, and we would take our stationary point, that's where x is minus 2, and we'll take two points either side of minus 2. I'll take, say, minus 3 and minus 1. And if we just section that off, something like this, okay, we next look at the gradient given by dy by dx. And we test out what kind of sign we get. When x is minus 3, if I substitute this into here, 4 times minus 3 all cubed plus 32, turns out to be a negative value. It turns out to be minus 76. So because it's a negative value, the graph will be going downwards, okay? something like that. At minus 2, we know that dy by dx comes out to be 0. So if it's 0, you've got a horizontal gradient. And when you substitute x equals minus 1 into here, 4 times minus 1 all cubed plus 32, you get positive 28. And when you have a positive value, the gradient would be increasing like that. So you can see that the curve at the stationary point is a minimum. So you've got two ways that you could try this. Okay, now in the last part, part three, we've got to work out for what values of x does x to the power 4 plus 32x increase as x increases. Now for increasing functions, the gradient is always positive. The curve is always on the upward part. So take for instance this curve here, it's increasing over this stretch and it's increasing from here up to here. So when a curve is increasing, dy by dx must be greater than zero. So what we've got is, we'll just start by saying when dy by dx is increasing, in other words, it's greater than zero. So we've seen that dy by dx was given by 4x cubed plus 32. So 4x cubed plus 32 must be greater than zero. Now I can still divide through by 4. 4 is a positive value, so it won't reverse the inequality here. It only reverses it if I'm dividing by a negative number. So we'll just section this off here, okay? So therefore what we would have is that if we divide by 4, x cubed plus 8 would be greater than 0. And if I take 8 from both sides, I therefore have x cubed is going to be greater than minus 8. And if I take the cube root of both sides, we therefore have x must be greater than the cube root of minus 8, which is minus 2, as we saw up here. So the curve would be going upwards, okay, it'd be increasing when x is greater.
greater than minus 2. Okay, well I hope that gives you an idea then of how to do all those parts.